My name is Ryan Salins. I'm a female to male transsexual, which means that I was born female and I've transitioned to male. But when I say that I was born female, I'm sometimes careful with that because I don't want people ever to have the image in their head of like a Barbie doll or something like that. I was assigned female, but psychologically, my brain has always been male. When I was born, my brain was, was developed as a male brain. And I will argue that till I'm blue in the face because as far as my mannerisms, anything about me, it's always been like this. I've never tried to change any of the ways that I've acted. The thing that gave me that cue that I wasn't the way that I was supposed to be was when my parents were constantly struggling with me with the way that I dressed, with the toys that I liked. They always would give me the toys I like and they'd sometimes try to throw in a Barbie or something like that, but it just never really worked. I didn't really understand my orientation until I was around 24 years old. Prior to my transition, when I like to say that I lived my life as eight months as a lesbian, my partner and I went on vacation to Boston and we went to this bookstore that was an LGBT bookstore. And we were walking through different sections. My partner falls into this transgender section. She pulls the book, The Body Alchemy by Lauren Cameron off the shelf. And uh, she's flipping through it. She's like, hmm. And then she put it back on the shelf and it kind of caught my eye a little bit because it's just a really cool book. And so I pulled it off the shelf as well. And I started looking through it and it was like someone switched the light switch on inside of me. And I realized that's who I was, that all those men in that book were assigned female and had transitioned through hormones and surgeries. And I knew that's what I wanted to do. So for me, then it was another four month process before I actually started coming out to people because I was scared, uh, scared of how people would react, scared of how I would access the surgeries and the hormones and everything, scared of finding doctors that would work with me because I just didn't know, you know, and I live in a more conservative state, so you never know how people are going to react to it in that way too. And so when I did come out, the first person I came out to was my partner. And that was probably the most difficult person to work with just because I love her and I want her to be in my life. Uh, family, I love them too, but it's their choice whether they want to be in my life or not, and I'll just deal with that because I don't see them every day anyway. And the second person I came out to was my brother. Through email, he's nine years older than me, and we are really good friends. We always have been. And he first said, well, I'm not surprised. Um, I've seen documentaries on this, and I always thought you were a transgender anyway. <laughs> the next day, he emailed back and said, okay, I'm freaking out now. Because, you know, there is a transition for everyone, especially when you physically start to change. That they're going to have to do that with your name, with your pronouns. And it's, it can be kind of scary. There's lots of what-ifs out there. He still lives in the rural town I'm from. And so how would the community react to him? How would they treat his children in the school system? Things like that when people found out. Because they would. <laughs> I cannot vocalize things that are really hard to vocalize for me. So I either do it through writing or art. And when this type of situation is going to be through writing. I came out to my parents four months in through a seven page letter detailing the history of my life using the F word in our family, which is feelings, <laughs> you know, uh, because at the fifth month mark after coming out is when I had my chest surgery. And so I felt that I should be coming out to them before I start going through changes because after the chest surgery, I wanted to start hormones uh, within a few weeks to a month after. My parents went through the grief cycle. And with the grief cycle, you first have your shock and denial, and then you can move into anger, and then you move into depression, and then you can slowly start moving into tolerance, and then slowly start to move into acceptance. Uh, everybody goes through the cycle differently. For my parents, they kind of bounced around in the anger, shock, denial, depression stage for about six months to a year, back and forth in that area. It's now been over three years, and I think we may be kind of close to tolerance. And then my sister found out through my parents, my brother, so then we had our little first conversations through email. Uh, she went through initial thing of just going like WTF. And <laughs> now we've kind of gone to a place where we are better. When you transition, there's something out there called the, the standards of care. It used to be called the Harry Benjamin standards of care, but I think more often now I see it being for just standards of care, which now the Rural Professionals Association of Transgender Health facilitate, look over, read through, change if needed, you know, and keep it up to date. And with these standards of care, there's recommendations. And I really stress recommendations highly because everybody's different and you really need to treat people on a case-by-case -case basis. But they recommend therapy first for at least three months. 
or 12 consecutive meetings. And the reason to have the therapy is so that the person can process all these things going on inside of them, so that the therapist can make sure there's not alert mental health issues going on there, uh, because the last thing they want is someone who's manic or bipolar or something like that, making this decision when there's other things that should be worked through first. All right, they want you to be in sound state of mind to make this decision because it's a big decision, both financially and physically. And so for me, I'd been in therapy for six years prior to understanding who I was uh, for an eating disorder and depression. And um, so I had that covered. And what the, what the standards of care they want you to do is first do your therapy. And then after the therapist gives a go ahead, start your hormones. Uh, they want you to be doing or do the real life test which now they're saying you can do with the hormones. A real life test meaning living in the other gender, the gender you're transitioning to for a year. They like you to change your name at that time so that you can see how you feel in society being seen in this different role than what you may have been seen in before, depending you know, on how some people <laughs> look. So they want you to do that first and then after that they want you to be reassessed and then you can look into if you want chest surgery uh, for, when I say chest surgery, for F to M's, born female, transition to males, that means bilateral mastectomies. Or they can do a keyhole so they can go in underneath the nipple if the tissue is small enough there. Uh, for male to females, meaning born male, transition to female, it could be breast augmentation. A lot of male females may choose not to do that just uh, because with the hormones of estrogen, they do develop small breasts. But depending on what they feel is most women for them, most comfortable for them, they may choose to get a bigger size. Uh, and then they really like you to wait two years before you look into lower surgeries. Uh, for female to males, that would be a phalloplasty where they construct a full size phallus or a, a metoioplasty, which is kind of a neophallus. It's, it's smaller. Um, for male to females, that would be the vagin vaginoplasty where they create the vagina and the clitoral and the vulva area. And, so, and the thing that I love about the male to female surgery is once they get that done, you never be able to tell that person once had a penis. It is amazing, the results. Female males, there's a long way they still have to go, but there's doctors out there that are very passionate about their work. And so they're really trying to help the, the trans man community. So for me, I started my chest surgery first because whether being male or female, I knew I did not want breast. I just didn't, they were not part of me. And uh, when I made the decision to do chest surgery first, I was thinking I'll just do this and then see how I'm doing. Maybe I can just take this step and not go further. Uh, but I knew very quickly after even getting my appointment scheduled that I also want to start hormones because it was just who I was. And so a month after the chest surgery, I started my hormones and this was in 2005. And then four months later, I had my name changed. And then after you get your name changed, you can do your driver's license, you can do your social security, and then you can try for your birth certificate. Here in the state of Nebraska, for your birth certificate to be changed, you have to have a letter stating from a doctor that's been notarized uh, that you've successfully completed irreversible sex reassignment surgery. All right, that's the wording there. Each state has different laws as to whether you can amend your birth certificate or not. Like the state of Ohio, for instance, you cannot. Other states may say, you just need your hysterectomy. This state, they haven't really pinpointed, they just need to know that you've had irreversible sex reassignment surgery. And then after those processes, I waited until 2006 to have a total hysterectomy. All right, so that's where they remove your fallopian tubes, your ovaries, your uterus, and your cervix. And I went in there for medical reasons. Uh, it was nice because I was trans to get rid of it too, but I was having severe problems with cramping and some spotting, things that I had problems with even before transitioning. It was just not good. So I had that done and the biopsies came back showing that I had multiple cysts in my ovaries, cysts in my fallopian tubes, and dysplasia of the cervix, which is actually shrinking and atrophy of that tissue. Over time, that becomes cancerous. So it was really good that I had that done, even though my insurance company, after they had pre-certified it and paid their part, came back four months later and said, the, the gender doesn't match the surgery, we want all of our money back. So the hospital got their money back and started sending me the $20,000 bills. I got a lawyer and fought it and won, which was good. So that was one I didn't have to cover. And the last step for me was a lower surgery. I had a metoyuloplasty done in May of 2008 in Belgrade, Serbia, which I was very pleased with that decision, even though it was very far away, away from home. Through those six years of therapy, I learned two things. Uh, the first one is the only person you have to live with for the rest of your life is yourself. Uh, friends and family come and go, sadly. And you, you have no control over that, but you're with yourself for the rest of your life. And so you have to live your life as true to what your inner spirit's telling you is possible. 
right? Learning to, to listen to the, this area of your life versus this. Okay, the logic is not always the right thing to listen to. Uh, the other thing that kept me strong is knowing that letting go of fear is the most empowering thing you can do for yourself. The fear is what holds people back from so many things in their life, whether it be going for a relationship, going for a new job, selecting a job, trying to get into college, you know, different things. 